have a special guest. Who do I have with me? Hey, Kelly, how you doing this morning? Great, thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad to have you with us here this morning. And we always love to learn something new in our community and around the world. Uh, before we dive into some of the uh, questions, uh, tell us just a, a synopsis about Kelly, uh, family, just a little bit about yourself. Nothing major. Uh, well, I have a background in education, and um, I have been a military spouse for over uh, 25 years, and we've settled here in the Peachtree City area. All right, sounds good. Well, thank your husband for all that he's done for our country thank and everything, you. because without him, you and I wouldn't be able to sit here and and have a discussion. Absolutely. All right, well, you uh, have dived into Southern College Counseling. This is you, your business. Um, what brought you to become a college counselor? Why did you decide you want to do this? So, as I said, my background is in education. I have taught at different levels throughout my teaching career. And when my own children went through the college application process, I found that there was a need for this service. I did a lot of research. I, research, I found that the college application process was fascinating. And I also found that families had questions. And I loved being able to help get answers for them. And so I decided to become a college consultant. I got a certificate in college consulting. I joined a professional organization, and I started my business, Southern College Consulting. Sounds good. Well, what do you see as the benefits of a strong college planning process for students and their parents? So... A strong college planning process allows students to self-discover. It allows them to think about their interests, think about their what they want in a college, and it allows them to grow through the process to make this big life decision at the end. And once they do that, they're confident and they're ready to handle stepping onto that college campus as a freshman. I believe that a strong college planning process also calms the process for both the parents and the families. There's a lot of different pieces to the college application process. There's testing, there's building a college list, there's essays, there's going on college visits, and there's, then there's the financial part. And just having a plan and having that all mapped out it helps the process to be more calm and less stressful. And I think the best thing about a strong college planning process at that is that the students have really great options in the end. So if they do a lot of research and they choose colleges to apply to based on academic, social, and financial fit, and that they follow that plan, then they have really great options at the end that they can choose from where they can be happy and they can thrive in college. Well, i tell you what, you know, a lot of kids uh, go to college and we're going to talk about uh, when they should start planning. A lot of kids go to college, some of them um, go on scholarships and everything. And you probably, I'm going to ask you this in a few minutes, you probably work with uh, all kids, including not just sports, but also academics on both sides, correct? Absolutely. Okay. And for your experience, when should people start planning for college? So... Financially, I think that families should start planning for college early in their children's school career. I think it's one of the things that they need to start planning for when their students go off to school because families are expected to contribute to the cost of education. So it's important to think about that budget early and to start budgeting for the cost of a college education. Academically, I think that students need to begin thinking about college when they start high school. The choices that they make as far as curriculum, 
courses, activities, how they spend their time. Those are all things that are reflected in the college application. And I also think that when they begin high school, that's a good time for them to start that self-discovery piece and to think about their interests, to think about possible careers, and do some career exploration. And this can help guide the process as they get into the more formal process of college. Um, thinking about college and they should begin starting that more formal piece around their junior year uh -huh. and that's when they'll start thinking about where they want to apply, what colleges they want to go visit and find out more about and think about that major. But if they don't start as a junior and they're a senior and they want to start the application process, there's still time for them to do that. It's just Starting as a junior gives them more time to think about and reflect on these choices that they're making. Well, you know what? The one thing that you brought up there was uh, choosing the school that's kind of sort of right for them because uh, if you really think about it, a lot of uh, in the, if you're a freshman, a lot of times you're thinking, I want to go to the school that my favorite football team is, whether it's a Georgia, whether it's an Alabama, whether it's a Florida or Florida State. Uh, and I know that a lot of students in our area, and, uh, from the Coward County area, Atlanta County areas, and everything, uh, that they 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 are going in, and going to different schools that they would have never thought of thought about. They were like, you know, my favorite team is say Alabama, but you know, I got recruited by say Ole Miss or something or Navy. Uh, how does a, how does a student choose a school based on? their academics or something that they may be wanting to do for the rest of their life compared to possibly choosing that school that they have been a fan of their whole life. So I think it's just part of the looking through the, going through the process and thinking about what they want and then really matching that to what their academic skills are, what their interests are, and financially is a big piece of the um, college planning process and just making sure that that match is made. It's Sometimes they have kind of ideas of this one particular college, but it might not in the end really be as they start to discover that it might not be the actual fit that they thought that it was in the beginning. Right, you know, and that's, that's been one of the major things that a lot of people have to go through, you know. I'm a fan of this school, but I ended up going to this school, you know. Uh, what would you say is the piece, the piece of the college planning process that causes the most concern so I think that for parents, I think the financial piece is the biggest concern, mm -hmm. and I think that doing that piece of planning early is one of the ways to alleviate some of that concern over the cost. And I also think that having family conversations early in the process is really important. It's important to do that at the beginning of the process so that the student and the parents are on the same page as far as paying for college. They can talk about how they plan to pay for college, what the college budget is going to be. And this way, everyone's on the same page and it also can help in not having some disappointments at the end because sometimes I see that students apply to a particular college that has been, maybe it's been their favorite college, and right. but it just doesn't work out in the end because financially it wasn't a match. They didn't have a plan for how they would pay for that particular right. college. So, and I do have a resource um, that I have. It's about ways that people do pay more for college, and it gives some mistakes that are made and ways that before students go to college and then even while they're in college that they can help not pay as much for, for college by not making those mistakes. And that's going to be um, available on your Facebook for the station. Okay. And also, so getting back to the students, like thinking about going to this one particular college. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on students to get into that one particular college. It's been their favorite college mm -hmm. for so long, and that contributes to pressure. So I really encourage my students 
to look at a wide range of colleges, to look at that academic, social, and financial fit, and to be equally excited about all of the colleges that they put on their college list. And this way, when they get to the end of the process, they have really great options that they're really, really excited about. And I think also one of the pressures that students feel is because people are always asking them that question. They're right. saying, what is your favorite school that you want to go right. to? What's your top choice? Right. So I think that one of the ways that students can help with that pressure that they feel is to already have a response like formulated in their their mind because there's people out there and they're well be they're well meaning they're interested in their lives they just are excited for them that they're going through this college process and if students already have an answer for that question in their mind and they can just say I've researched a lot of great colleges I've applied to colleges that are a really great fit for me and they're really all my top choice until I know what my choices are after colleges give their acceptances back and then the one I pick is going to be my top choice and right. I think they can just kind of think that they you know that they're going to be asked that question and to have an answer like that put in their mind so that they don't feel the pressure from that. It definitely is. Uh, I was listening to you while you were speaking and a lot of schools you know somebody's like this is my the kids like this is my favorite college but if they're going for a particular Thing like drama, you know, maybe Georgia is not the school to, for drama. I mean, there's a lot of great drama schools out there for drama. If they want to be an actor, actress, go into the world, whatever that world is, or you know, writing or you know, anything like that, being an author. There's a lot of different schools, but then also a lot of the schools do provide uh, great programs. Yeah. Absolutely. There are great colleges everywhere. There's over 4,000 colleges in the United States, and there's great colleges for everyone to go to, and there's lots of programs, and it's really important to research those programs and see how programs are different. And you also want to go to a college where a college, if you want to be in a certain program, that it plays to your strengths because right. sometimes there's – a major and it's at two different colleges and the curriculum can be very different and yes. you want to go to a college where you can graduate you want to go to a college where it will meet your needs and that you are able to complete the coursework and graduate with yes. a college degree definitely is well let's get back to how has COVID impacted the college process has COVID impacted the college process that much? If so, in what ways? So, yes, it has. COVID has affected the college application process in multiple ways. The biggest way is the SAT and the ACT test. So those were canceled at the beginning of the pandemic. And after that, once they started to bring the tests back, students were having a lot of trouble trying to get the test dates and the seats because of the limited seating. Uh -huh. And then after that, those tests, some of those tests were canceled. And so that caused a lot of stress for parents and students. And it still does. But for Fortunately, most colleges have gone to the test optional, and that means exactly what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It's optional whether you submit your test scores or not. So if you didn't get to take a test and you're applying to a test optional school, you don't have to worry about it. They're going to evaluate you on what you send into the college. Now, if you went and you took a test and you're happy with your scores, send those in and they will evaluate your scores as well. But there's not a reason to be concerned about that because, as I said, most colleges have gone test optional. Another way that COVID has impacted the college application process is that students and families have been unable to make college visits. So that's that piece that helps with the fit and helps students know or helps them to find out how they feel on campus, does it feel right for them, and so students and families have not been able to do that. Fortunately, there are a lot of resources online where students can do virtual tours, even beyond the college website. There's a lot of websites that allow you to look at the colleges from a different perspective, and then there's also websites that have student reviews where you can read and see what their 
what they have to say about the college campus. And I also encourage students to try to find ways to connect with, just connect with students that are on the campuses that you are interested in, maybe through friends or maybe colleagues, through your parents, maybe through the college itself or a consultant, can all help with you connecting to other students. But it's important that families know that colleges are also working to connect with students they want to match those they want the match just like the students want to match the college the college wants to match with the students and right. bring really great students that they want onto their campus and then the final way that or one of the other ways that things have been different is students just haven't been able to participate in the things that they thought that they were going to. Their activities have been canceled, sports have been canceled, yeah. clubs, some of them probably lost part-time jobs that they had. So those have been canceled. And then other things like interviews, like informative interviews or evaluative interviews at colleges have been canceled. And it's just important that that parents and students understand that the, the colleges themselves, they, they understand what has happened during this pandemic and they have worked very hard to make accommodations and they have changed the entire way that they look at college applications. They have changed the way they do interviews. So now they're interviewing virtually and by video and that they are doing the very most that they can to make this application process as smooth for parents, for families as they can. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, before we get to one, a couple more questions we have for you, one more last question, and why, you know, uh, one thing that you pointed out there, another thing you pointed out there, I, we're talking about how some of the kids today, they're a little different, this generation's a little different, and even younger and younger and younger. If, if internet, phones, all that is their future, I mean, right now you see it on, on, on national TV, everybody's got big screens where they're watching the games and all that kind of stuff. This is where the kids are used to. What about this virtual learning? Is there going to be a time where you think that virtual learning is going to be a part of a transition from going to high school to college for kids? Well, I'm not sure about that, but I do know that virtual learning is already a part, even before the pandemic, was a part of college education. So some courses that are at colleges are actually virtual anyway, or you have that choice if you want to do a virtual course. And I think it just depends on the student and how they learn best and what they want from their college career as far as virtual learning. Yeah, I was. I, I did a lot of virtual learning when I was in school a few years back, and it, it was easy. Well, how can how can hiring a college consultant help with the college planning process? So, one of the advantage of hiring a college consultant is that they are a neutral person in the college application process and the college planning process, and that can help calm the process. It can help with any maybe disagreements that there might be uh, with the family because that is a neutral opinion. Mm -hmm. They also can help, they act as a project manager. They can help make that plan. They can help make sure that that plan is followed. And But most importantly, a college consultant can help the student have really great options in the end. They can help with that academic, social, and financial fit. They have a lot of resources and may have colleges that aren't on the students' radar for them to research programs that they know about. I visit many colleges each year to find out about their campus and to find out about their programs, their all their admissions information. And so someone like me can help anchor the college planning process for students and their parents. Well, um, Kelly, it's been great to have you with us here this morning, guys. Uh, Southern College Consultant, uh, Consultant, 
Uh, tell us how we can get in touch with you, uh, where we should go, and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So I can be reached at my website, which is southerncollegeconsulting.com. I can also be reached through Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, and on those, all of those, you can reach out to me if you'd like to find out more about college consulting and what I could do to help you and your student, you can sign up for a free consultation. Sounds good. We'll appreciate you back here in a moment on the RNS Mornings. We return 